Starship's new booster has begun its testing regimen, Falcon 9 squeezes in several more missions before the year ends, Starlink passes a milestone, and we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. Okay. Last week we covered Starship 24 lighting up its replacement Raptor engine for what could have been its final static fire, followed immediately by Booster 9's trip down to the launch site, hosting new upgrades like the utilization of electric thrust vector controlling, no hydraulic power units, and a relocated Starlink dish at the top of its aero covers. She was also the first rocket to undergo cryo testing directly from its transport stand. SpaceX spending the majority of Wednesday first pumping LN2 into its lower tank, meant for liquid oxygen detanking, then repeating for the upper methane tank. All look good from here, so it is expected to switch places again with Booster 7 to receive engines with that electric TVC. Here's an image provided by Starship Gazer of that for our viewing pleasure. Check out his and La Padre's social media accounts with the links below. Road closures, however, have been called off for the rest of the holiday week. Meanwhile, Booster 7 shies away up Highway 4 and High Bay 2, undergoing final preparations before conducting potentially a 33-engine static fire, but eventually an orbital flight, maybe early next year. After last Friday's episode, Falcon 9 launched two SCS-03BM power communication satellites to medium Earth orbit from Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, Florida. This was the eighth liftoff for the first stage booster, but uh, you may not see its landing or the deployment of its satellites. Neener, neener. But the following day, Falcon launched again to place 54 more Starlink B1.5 satellites into low Earth orbit, this time from a couple pads over at 39A Kennedy Space Center, and this was a record-breaking 15th mission for a Falcon rocket, and she lived to fly again, landing on the Just Read the Instructions drone ship coasting in place on the Atlantic Ocean. You may watch and be amazed by the sorcery. And there you can see that engine has ignited. Let's watch as Falcon 9 touches down on Just Read the Instructions. One landing leg deploy. Landing this marks SpaceX's third launch in just 36 hours, and Starlink now has more than 1 million active subscribers. The company is pushing to finish out the year stronger than ever. Next week, two more missions are currently slated to lift off from each coast, and the Starlink one may be the first to carry Gen 2 satellites. Meanwhile, NASA is prepping Crew-6 for their mission to the space station in February, and just selected SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket to launch Sentinel-6B, a satellite using radar altimeter to bounce signals off the ocean's surface to record ocean topography measurements targeting to lift off in November of 2025. And now a word about today's sponsor, Epic TV, a censorship-free video platform with original news programs and documentaries investigating critical issues not covered anywhere else. With all the cloak and dagger manipulation going on behind the scenes between politics and big tech, this kind of content is more valuable now than ever before. Tune into new programs every day from crossroads to American thought leaders and get reporting on factual events other news outlets won't cover. Did you guys happen to notice that the major media outlets didn't even bother covering the Twitter files? Well, Epic TV has, and you can stream their shows and documentaries on your phone, computer, tablet, or Roku TV. So check them out today, and I have a special offer for you. Just simply sign up and start watching. No credit card required and no strings attached. If you decide to sub within 14 days, it's just $1 for two months. Go to watchepic.com slash space eccentric and subscribe. That's watch, E-P-O-C-H, dot com, slash SpaceX centric. But now it's time for today's honorable mention. Merry Christmas. I have a few of them for you today. First up, French company, Ariane Space's second Vega C rocket failed to carry two imaging satellites for Airbus into orbit this week. After stage set, the Zip Fighter 40, second stage started going off a nominal trajectory. A little more shallow than expected, as you can see by their fancy graph. The investigation into the anomaly is still ongoing. And here's some more not unkind news for you. NASA's InSight Mars Lander has reached its end of watch after four years of collecting unique science on the planet. The agency's website writing JPL was, quote, unable to contact the lander after two consecutive attempts, leading them to conclude the spacecraft's solar-powered batteries have run out of energy. InSight, standing for Interior Exploration Using Seismic Investigations, Geodesy and Heat Transport, was designed to study the deep interior of Mars using a series of scientific instruments and a shovel. Okay, maybe this news ain't so merry, okay? So I'll leave you with one more. InSight's Martian rover friend, Perseverance, has dropped its second dingleberry on the red planet. Of course, the first dropping was Mars helicopter Ingenuity. But this road apple is the first of 10 cache tubes containing surface samples to be sharded out over the next two months at the Three Forks location. 
If Percy is unable to load its other onboard tubes into the Mars sample return lander years from now, the lander's helicopter friends will have to retrieve these titanium Lincoln logs as backups. Well, that's all I have for this week, fellas. Thanks so much for being here. But before you go, check out our bonfire store and get yourself one of our new Starship hoodies. We have tees too if you prefer to show off them guns, son. But do have a nominal Christmas weekend. Don't do anything I would do. And I'll see you back here next Friday. Until that time, Godspeed. Man.